Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Everybody that has hand, will you put your hand together one time? Just give God a hand, clap of praise all over this building. Hallelujah. Is anybody glad to be in the house of the Lord just one more time? Hallelujah. Come on, just give God another hand, clap of praise. Come on, put your hands together. Thank you, Jesus. God is such an awesome God. God is such a marvelous God, and he has afforded us this opportunity uh, to come into his house. And I'm just, listen, family, I'm just so grateful about it because, believe it or not, there are people in this world who desire to be able to do what you just did, which was being able to walk into the house of the Lord, and they cannot. But we truly honor and praise God that he allowed us to come into his house, and I am truly grateful. We thank God for our online family uh, that are tuning in with us from across the nation. God bless you. As you're coming in, please take this moment uh, to dust your feet off at the door by liking and sharing this broadcast, by inviting others to be a part of what God is doing, amen, in his church. Hallelujah. We praise God for it. Let us stand. We're going to go to God in prayer. We're going to dive right in, y'all. I have so much to give you in such little time. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> thank you, Jesus. Sometimes that's all you can say is just thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we thank you for who you are. We thank you for your presence, your power, your provision, your promises. Lord, we thank you for everything that you represent. We thank you for who you are, for you, our Father, which art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Come on, church. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debt to us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, both now and forever. Father God, I pray right now that you would send nourishment into this house. That you would send strength, God. God, whatever your people need, God, that you would send peace, that you would send joy, that you would send finances, God, whatever it is, that you would send healing, that you would send wholeness, that you would send stability, whatever your people need, God, I ask that you would send it now. Can somebody say, Lord, send it now? Come on, send it now, Lord. Send it now, God, from the north, the south, the east, and the west, God, wherever they may be, wherever we are in our life, send it, Lord. Send it, Lord. Send it, Lord. Send it. We need you to do it for us, God. In the name of Jesus, God, I ask that I decrease and that you increase. Give me teaching power, God. Teach, anoint me ever the more to teach your people. Lord, open my spiritual ears so I can hear you clearly as you speak. Because we are your people, the sheep of your pasture. And Father, we thank you for it right now. Feed us. <laughs> Till we won't no more. Y'all remember that? Come somebody and say, Lord, feed me. Till I won't no more. In Jesus' name. Now, if you believe it, come on, put your hands together one time. Hallelujah. That God still answers prayer. Before taking your seats, just turn to three people and say, welcome to the anointing. Come on. Yeah, welcome to the anointing. Yeah, welcome to the anointing. Y'all may be seated in the presence of the Lord. For those of you who are watching online, would you just put hashtag welcome to the anointing. Welcome to the anointing. Amen. Just the other day, we were out, amen, at the store, and I met this young lady. Uh, well, we met this young lady the other day in the store, and when I went up to her, y'all, I pulled one. I, see, I got my cards in my pocket. I just took them out of my pocket, y'all. I don't like stuff in my pocket while I'm teaching, but I just took them out of my pocket. And I took the, the, the new card out of our pocket. I said, listen, 
Uh, I would like to invite you to the anointing. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. I said, I'd like to, she's like, what? And so when she got the card, it says, welcome to the anointing. And then, you know, her countenance changed. She smiled. And preferably we will be able to meet her one day. Amen. Listen, y'all, I'm, I'm, I'm going to jump into the lesson, but I just have to recognize one of my friends from Florida, a prophet, Ricardo Malone. God bless you. God bless you, Sister Riddick, Sister Cox. God bless you, Sister Powell. As a matter of fact, we want to send up a special prayer for Sister Cox even now. I spoke to her earlier. She is not feeling her best on today, but we pray now in the name of Jesus that he will heal her body in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. God bless you, Sister Powell. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. So as you all are coming in, please make sure you come in, you like, and you share the broadcast, and then make sure that you speak to somebody. How you doing, Sister Harris? Make sure that you let us know that you are in the building. Hashtag welcome to the anointing. Hallelujah. On last week, we began uh, a new teaching series concerning what is the church. And we are in the introduction of that. And so on last Wednesday, we began, amen, with this topic, with this series. And so we're going to hopefully, prayerfully uh, conclude tonight. And so I'm trying to get there. I'm trying to get there. Okay. Hopefully we will conclude tonight uh, with this introduction so we can dive deeper into part one through whatever the Lord say. Because like I stated before, it's so much to learn about. Uh, what the church is, uh, the ordinances of the church. I mentioned that uh, uh, the disciplines of the church, the uh, uh, the purpose of the church. It is so much, y'all. It is so much. And I dare not rush through this thing because I think it's vitally important, uh, not only because we are a new church here in this city, but also I believe it's vitally important whenever, amen, for us to know what the church is. Praise God, I think it's vitally important. And since this is what we're going to ded we dedicate our lives to, uh, we come, we pour our hearts out to, we come expecting uh, deliverance, expecting healing, expecting whatever be the case. And so I think it's, it's foundational to our spiritual growth and development that we understand what the church is. Because I, if I understand it correctly, Jesus died for this. Didn't he not? Did he not die for the church? And so I want to know what was so important to Jesus that he would come and he would die for, uh, he would die for the church. Uh, so uh, just to bring you all up to speed, I pray those of you who are connected to the APWM family that you have received your outline for this teaching. And also for those who would like to be a part of our email list, it's some information that's going to come on the screen sometime during the class. And you just call that information or whatever be the case and you'll be able to get connected to receive the outline. So last week we learned that the first falsehood is that you must have a certain personality to fit in. That was the first lie, okay? I just had to make it cute calling it a falsehood, okay? The first falsehood that we learned on last week is that you must have a certain personality to fit in, meaning you got to be a certain type of person to be able to come to church. And that's nothing but a lie straight from of the pits of hell, and that lie has caused so many people to go to hell because they feel like they can't go to church to get their help because they, they, their personality don't fit in. But, that, but, but, but that's a lie. That's a lie. Um, the second falsehood uh, that we learned on last week is uh, that you can't have tattoos and piercings to be welcomed into the church. And I gave the analogy or uh, the example or whatever last week that I was at the doctor's office, brother, and she was uh, drawing blood, and uh, she looked at me, you too old to have um, tattoos. I said, ma'am, listen, I done had these things over 20 years. I, don't, I can't get an eraser now and start erasing them. They, they, they're on there. They're on there. But so, so there are people who have tattoos and piercing, and people make them believe that because they do, they cannot come. They're not welcome into the house of the Lord. But once again, the devil is a liar. Uh, the third falsehood uh, that we learned on last Wednesday uh, is that the church is only for Christians. <laughs> I sound like Maury, and that's a lie. <laughs> okay, and that's a lie. The church is not only for Christians. 
if it was only for Christians, would nobody be at the church? <laughs> oh my God. We come to be delivered. We come to be set free. We come to be saved, sanctified, and full of the hope. That's why we come on, y'all. If the if I had to be a Christian before I got in, none of us would ever got in. Come on now. The fourth thing, the fourth falsehood. That's what we're gonna start tonight. The fourth falsehood is that we don't need to attend church. To be a growing Christian. <laughs> That's the fourth lie. The fourth falsehood. That we don't need to attend church to be a growing Christian. Yeah, that, that's that, that. Oh, my God. That's But listen, y'all, these lies have been taught. Somebody been teaching them. Somebody been saying it. Because if we just look at the operation of our society, the operation of our communities, our world, we will see that people believe that they don't have to grow, go to church. Here you go, pastor, to be a growing Christian. Will somebody give this to him, please? But that's a lie. <laughs> that we don't need to attend church to be a growing Christian. While it may be true that a person can trust in Jesus Christ for salvation, apart from attending a local church, I got saved in my uh, car. Okay? So we can get salvation anywhere. Amen. All we have to do is say, Lord, forgive me. Amen. <laughs> with a repentant heart, with a, a sincere heart. Not just say, Lord, forgive me because we got caught. Y'all know. Come on, y'all. Y'all know. We get When we get caught, now I want forgiveness. Come on, y'all. To stop from getting that whooping. Yeah, come on, y'all. Come on. Okay. We've all been children before. Oh, I wasn't trying to do it. I wasn't trying to do it. Yes, you were. You just got caught. If I didn't catch you, you'd have kept on doing it. So it may be true that a person can trust in Jesus Christ for salvation apart from attending a local church. It is much harder to see how they can carry their cross, follow Christ, and grow spiritual, grow in spiritual maturity apart from engaging with and committing to the bride. Jesus so values and loves, which is the church. Let me back up. It's harder to see how we can take up our cross. Something that's heavy. Come on, y'all. Something that's strenuous. Follow Christ. Come on, y'all. And grow in spiritual um, maturity apart from engaging with and committing to his bride that he values and loves, which he is the church. That's why it's so hard for people to stay saved. Because they're trying to do it apart from the church. Apart from their strength. Apart uh, uh, from the encouragement. Come on. Apart from the, the power. I'm trying to do it over here. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Just like this phone. This phone is good while it's charged. I can take this phone anyway, sister, long as it's charged. But sooner, oh my God, or later, I'm going to have to take this phone back to what? To the, char to, oh my God, back to the charging station. Thank you, Lord. So that it can be charged. Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. So that it can be useful. Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. So it won't die. So we have many people down on the vine because of the thought process that they believe. They listen, I can grow spiritually. Oh, my God. At home. Oh, okay. Okay. At the mall. Okay, because everybody ain't at home. Oh, my God. What's that place called? Harrison Casino. Is that the name of the thing? Harrison. 
Saracene. That must be another one. Saracene. <laughs> Come on, y'all. The church is Christ's bride. We're going to learn more on this truth during this, during this series entitled, What is the Church? You know, we're going to go deeper. But right now, we're still in the introduction of this thing. You know? And although we're in the introduction, it's important and even more so that the foundation is built on Scripture. Oh, my God. We don't have time to waste, family. Whatever we build, it needs to be built on the Word of God. Do you not know that it, no matter what you build, it could be a business. Guess what? Build it on the Word of God. Relationship, guess what? Build it on the word of God. Your career, your education, whatever it is, build it on the word of God. In new members orientation, we, we just started new members orientation, uh, the segment dealing with accountability and stewardship. And you're going to notice, we're going to learn that in stewardship, uh, it's not just talking about our money, but it's also talking about our hygiene. What we eat, come on, somebody. Being good stewards on how we take care of our house, everything. But, so that lets us know that everything that it concerning us needs to be built on Scripture. Okay? Let, let us look at Revelation 21. Revelation 21, verses 1 through 4. Come on, administrators, we praise God for those of you who are watching online with us. Would you put that in the screen for us? Revelation 21, verses 1 through 4. God bless you all as you're coming in. Sister Gray, as you're coming in, please take a moment to like and to share this broadcast. Sister Mars Kawanda, God bless you. Sister Bell, God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Sister Hooks, God bless you. Hallelujah. Revelation chapter 21, verses 1 through 4. When you have it, say amen. Amen. The Bible reads, and I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first, first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, behold, meaning take a look and see, behold, the tabernacle of God is with men. And he will dwell with them and they shall be his people and God himself shall be with them and be their God. And God shall wipe away all their tears. Uh, from their eyes, I just went on and threw this in here because I, I felt like somebody needed some little extra encouragement, even though you didn't ask for it, I feel you. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow, nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain for the former things that passed away. So family, not only is the church the bride of Christ, and like I stated, we're going to go deeper into it. This is just the introduction. I'm just trying to wet your whistle a little bit. Uh, what is it called? Bring your appetizer. Thank you, Jesus. So not only is the church the bride of Christ, but the church is also the body of Christ. Being part of the body of Christ means we are called to be continually. Oh, my God. Can somebody say continually? We are called to be continually shaped to be more and more like Christ. Okay, let me say it again. Being part of the body of Christ. Somebody missed that. Means we are called to be continually shaped to be more and more like 
Christ. Let me say it again because somebody else going to need to catch this. Being part of the body of Christ means we are called to be continually shaped to be more and more like Christ. Oh, Lord, my God, they're the preach, y'all. Because oftentimes, amen, people are quitting churches and and mad at the church, and then they mad at the pastor. They mad at God, and oh, I'm, I'm gonna get that. I'm gonna teach on that too, because the church is not continually being shaped more and more like Christ. The church is being shaped to fit people's personal preferences and what they think the church should be, or how the church, how the folks should act. Come on, y'all. And, and, and God didn't give us the church so we can do it how we want to do it. Did y'all know that? Hey, my God. But he built his church specifically for a reason, and he has details on how he wants this thing to go. Just like we mentioned about the iron. Remember the iron? Do y'all remember the story about the iron? We can go buy the, the most expensive iron. Run us some bath water. Get that iron real hot, Pastor. And throw the iron in the water, try to heat the water up. We got a problem. Oh, he said that. The minister said that's not right. And that's what the sinners say when they come to church. Hold up, this not, oh my God. This not right. I might not know God, but this not right. Because this, this, that's what they were doing at the club last. This not right. So as the body of Christ, we are called to continually, meaning every week we should get better. And better in some shape, form, or fashion. Some people are, are able to make bigger steps than others. But as long as you're making a step, come on, somebody. <laughs> I mentioned the other week, as long as you're scooting or something, come on, y'all. <laughs> Trying to get better, we should continually be shaped more and more like Christ. Amen. This happens by letting the word of God, oh, the Bible, Guide our faith and our lives. If we're going to continually be shaped to be more and more like Jesus, this happens by letting, meaning allowing, permitting the word of God, the Bible, to guide our faith and our lives. We can't let everybody guide our faith. Girl, if I was you, I wouldn't believe that. Come on. You're trying to guide my faith. If I was you, I wouldn't do that. Wait a minute. Now you're trying to guide my life. But for, in order for us to be more and more like Christ, we have to allow the word of God, be in the Bible, guide our faith and our lives by worshiping God, not the pastor. We don't worship me. Oh, no, we don't. By worshiping God. <laughs> And celebrating the sacraments, as Pastor Johnson used to say all the time. Celebrating the sacraments that Jesus gave us and by living in community with each other. Living in community with each other. Worshiping God and celebrating the sacraments that Jesus gave us and by living in community with each other. Becoming a member of the church means that uh, we belong to Jesus Christ. Oh, my God. It means that we belong to Jesus Christ and that we belong to the people of God. So that means I'm not my own. <laughs> now that I'm a member of the body of Christ, that means I belong to Jesus. I don't belong to me. Ooh. Come on, y'all. Okay, 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 let me make this. My rules, my house. Anybody ever said that? You living in my house? You going to do what? Okay, I knew some parents was here somewhere. As long as you're up in here. Okay, okay. So being a member of the church means that we belong to Jesus. And that we belong to the people of God. Oh, my God, this is good. This is good. This is good. As I stated a moment ago, the church is also called the bride of Christ, emphasizing that the church is joined in a deep and intimate relationship with Jesus and is bound to help him by a covenant 
similar to the covenant of marriage. Wow. <laughs> the church is joining a deep and intimate relationship with Jesus. Not a deep, intimate religion. It's a relationship. It's different. It's, it's a difference, y'all. I keep stating, I've stated it before. You probably have never heard me say it, so I'm going to throw it out there again. Maybe one day I'll explain it deeper. Uh, it was religion that killed Jesus. <laughs> and they thought they were doing God a favor. Come on, man. They thought they were doing God a favor when they ki- the preachers killed them. Oh, my God, okay. <laughs> The church folk, the church folk, quote, unquote. It's a difference. Just because you go to church don't make you church folk, okay? It's a difference. Church folk are speaking tongues in here and cuss you out out there. It's a difference, okay? The church is joining a deep and intimate relationship with Jesus. We try to build a relationship with Jesus. When we have a relationship with Jesus, that's where worship come in. Because worship is intimate. Oh, God. Okay. Intimacy comes from when you deep or you close with somebody in a relationship. Okay. Uh, and that's what worship is. He said they that worship him must worship him in what? Spirit and in truth. But in everything they have breath, do what? Praise them. So that means everybody can praise God. It don't matter who they are, what they doing. They can be full as a tick. And I ain't talking about awful food either. High as a test party, but they still can praise God. Because praise is celebrating, adoring. Lord, I thank you. You're awesome, God. You're good to me. That's praise. He said everybody can do that. The trees praise them. The cattle praise them. The grass praise them. Come on, y'all. The birds praise him, but those who worship him must worship him in spirit. That's a little bit deeper, isn't it? That's intimacy. So the church is joining a deep and intimate relationship with Jesus and is bound to him by a covenant similar to the covenant of marriage. That's why we always hear the old saints say, uh, he's married to the backslider. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Y'all, have, you, have you ever heard that before? Because this, when we become members of the body of Christ, we're in a covenant like marriage. Oh, Lord, thank you, Jesus. Help me, help me along through here. Okay. Uh, this is the introduction, y'all. I promise y'all, as the weeks go, we're going to break this stuff down. Okay. The presence of Christ is the key to the life of the church. The presence of Christ. Do I want you always here? Yeah. Bring everybody you know. Bring the whole community. The standing room only. Praise God. But the presence of Christ is the key to the life of the church. And that's why we say all the time, even, if we, even when we said it in new members orientation, uh, uh, that's why the person who reads the scripture, come on, y'all. The person that says the prayer. Every person have to have Christ in them. Listen, y'all, because Christ is the life of the church. Oh, my God. Yeah, you can see, but you ain't, you ain't ready yet. Oh, my God. Yeah, you got a word, but you're not ready. <laughs> is this making sense? The life of the Christ is the life of the church. So that's why every time we come, we can feel his presence because we understand that Christ is the life of the church. And if Jesus not here, ain't no need of me being here either. I know it's pretty in here and a a lot of investments have been made and sacrifices have been put in place. But if Jesus is not here, I don't want to be either, sister. The presence of Christ is the key (laughs) to the life of the church. Not the software that we have, not the the, the anointed fingers and the voice of Dr. Clay and, and Christian on the instruments. No, 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 no. The key to the life of the church is Jesus. Oh, my God. It don't matter if I can preach or not. If Jesus is not here, we ain't, we ain't, ain't nothing happening. The presence of Christ is the key to the life of the church. It is in and through the church that Christ encounters 
calls, transforms, equips, and sends his people into the world. We come in, we get empowered. We get equipped. Transformation takes place. So when we leave, we go out and we're excited. We want to tell everybody about Jesus and how good God has been. And we tell my friend, girl, I got an attitude. Come on, somebody. We call it, folk. I got an attitude. What's wrong with you? Nothing wrong with me. I got an attitude of faith and expectation. Thank you, Jesus. God uses the church to introduce salvation to those who don't know him. When people come to church, they ain't coming to see us. Even if we invited them. They're not coming to see us. They're coming to see Jesus. Come on, y'all. They're not coming to see us. <laughs> Somebody, I thank God she ain't watching this right now, boy. She was tripping out about my tangerine suit I had on Sunday. But she didn't log on to see my own suit. She logged on to hear and see Jesus. God uses the church to introduce salvation to those who don't know him and to nurture the faith of believers. We come to get our faith nurtured. Like we just talked about this phone, get it plugged in and get it recharged, y'all. It's so much going on today. It don't matter what station you turn it on, it's negativity. <laughs> you don't have to be the news. I've been watching it more lately, though, the last year or so. I've been watching the news more lately. But it's not just the news. It don't matter what you watch. It could be a cartoon. It could be Sports Center. Come on, y'all. So, <laughs> Stephen A. just going crazy all today. <laughs> Lord have mercy. Call the girl Purple Rain. Come on, somebody. <laughs> all day long, y'all. So when we come to church, amen, we coming to see Jesus, and we coming to have our faith nurtured. The church is God's instrument for expressing his compassion and concern for the world. The church is God's instrument for expressing his compassion and concern for the world. The church is God's instrument Ooh. for expressing his compassion and concern for the world. What is the church? Ooh. It's one of God's instruments for expressing his compassion. Yeah. That means we don't have to, we, we're not supposed to be doing folk dirty and treating people in any kind of way, church. Because this is God's instrument. <laughs> For expressing his compassion and concern for the church. The church is indispensable for Christian believers. If I'm a Christian, how can I stop going to church? If I'm a Christian. The church is indispensable for Christian believers. I'm a Christian. What church you go to? I don't. Wait a minute, there's too many in the world for you not to go somewhere. In the church, Christians are mutually bound uh, to each other. The picture of an individual Christian along with God, oh, y'all catch this, it's alien in the New Testament. <laughs> An individual Christian just by himself, it just, it just me and God. <laughs> That's alien in the New Testament. Christians are, are taught, oh my God, thank you, Holy Spirit. Christians are taught to call God, to call a God, what? Our Father. Oh my God. That, that's the model prayer. We, we said it a moment ago, our Father, which art in heaven. He, he taught us to call God our Father, meaning we, he got brought, we, we, we're not the only one. We have fellow brothers and sisters. He's our Father. Father. We are taught to call God our Father and not just my Father. You know, sometimes you might have to get personal and say, our Father. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is my dad. God, I need you right now. Ain't nobody, nobody else. Oh, it's fine. But he's taught us to call him our Father. 
the importance of community in the Bible can't be overemphasized. We mentioned that word uh, community last week. And I just, I summed it up. I said community was a variety pack. <laughs> Meaning some of everybody is a part of the community. Just look at your natural community. Different people live in your community. Different mindsets, uh, different backgrounds, different upbringings, different dress codes, different whatever, financial statuses. It's a community. The importance of community in the Bible can't be overemphasized. The church as one body implies that Christians not only belong to Jesus Christ, but we also belong to one another. Ooh. I don't need you. Wait, what, what, wait, wait a minute. <laughs> the church is, it, 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 oh my God, it, the church is as one body, but we also need one another. Fellowship with Christ and with each other makes believers a single family united in love. We just got through talking on teamwork makes the dream work, and then we carried over into uh, the blessings of unity, me not knowing what God was going to lead me us to several months later into what is the church. But when I was putting this in there, I said, God is so amazing because he said Fe fellowship with Christ and with, with each other makes believers a single family united in love. I was like, God, you're so amazing. We just got through learning uh, the blessings of unity. And then another thing, we don't say we have church members, but we call each other what? Family. So God already, see, listen, y'all, y'all. God already be setting this thing up. So in the church, each individual is needed and important. I talked about it Monday night in new members orientation. Every member, every individual is needed and you are important. Just tell yourself, say I'm needed and I am important. Thank you Jesus. I'm needed and I am important. I was able to ask you all to say that freely because I know we don't have selfish people in the house or watch it online. So I, I, it wasn't no thing for me to ask you to say that because some folks say, I'm important. And if, and if it don't go my way, I'm leaving. But guess what? We don't have them type of people. So we understand, yeah, I'm needed. I'm important. Our pastor, what do I need to do to help the body of Christ move forward? <laughs> uh, let's look at 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 12. 1 Corinthians chapter 12. God bless you, Sister Moulton. God bless you, Sister Johnson. God bless you. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for sharing. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, just like that. You haven't said amen. amen. Uh, First Corinthians chapter 12 describes, uh, before we read it, it describes the church as a body. With each part or with each person playing an important role. Uh, each person's gift enrich the church and enable it to carry on its work in the world. Each person's gift enriched the church and enables it to carry on its work in the world. That's why the enemy do not want us to come to church so that we won't learn that our gifts help to enrich the church and carry it out into the world to make a difference in our, fa in our personal life, in our family, in our neighborhood, our community, our city, the state, and the world. The devil don't want us to know that. He wants us to fight each other, hate on each other, don't like each other, don't talk to each other, because he understands that we all come together. <laughs> that his kingdom got to come down. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, we're going to read it in its entirety because it speaks of the church as the body of Christ. Let me grab my Bible.
1 Corinthians chapter 12. I'm going to get Dr. to help me as well with this. 1 Corinthians chapter 12. I'm trying my best to, Sister Riddick. She said, teach, Pastor. I'm trying my best. I'm trying my best. Y'all pray for me. Dr. Clay, what version do you have? All of them. Lord have mercy. Technology is a blessing. Let's see. I'm going to try to walk through this thing, but do it kind of. It says, now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. I know, uh, ye know that ye were Gentiles carried away unto these dumb idols, even as you were led. Wherefore, I give you to understand that no man speaking by the Spirit of God calleth Jesus accursed, and that no man can say that Jesus is Lord but by the Holy Ghost. Let me pause right there. Listen, y'all, when you're at the altar, altar workers, I'm trying to put all this in here at the same time. When we're at the altar, altar, altar workers, <coughs> and, 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 and I'm praying, or Dr. Claire's praying, or some, it's going to come to the time when you're praying for people at the altar. And, and, and especially when you're dealing with demonic influence, and you know, because folk will fall down and ain't nothing wrong. They just fall in. The devil in them will fall down. Pastor tell you, it'll fall down so you can get your hands off of them. Come on, somebody. Pray that you'll leave them alone. But when you're praying, when you're dealing with demonic people, uh, de demonic influence, that's one thing that the devil won't say. You say, say Jesus is Lord. <laughs> that's one thing the devil will not say. You know why? Because the devil wanted to be the Lord. Come on. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor. The devil wanted to be. So he, the devil would not say Jesus is Lord. Ooh. Verse 4. Now, there are diversities of gifts, but the same spirit. And there are differences of administrations, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of operations. But it is the same God which worketh all in all. Verse 7. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with them. For to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge by the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another the gifts of healing by the same Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another diverse kinds of tongues to another, the interpretations of tongues, but all these work it, that one and the self same spirit dividing to every man se severally as he will. Listen, he's showing us all these different diversities of the gifts, but it's coming from the same spirit. Oh my God. So that means your gift and my gift shouldn't be fighting. Oh my God. It's the same spirit. That's just like my right hand and my left hand beat me up. It's the same body. What, what, what is going on? So your gift and my gifts, it should be a way that both of our gifts are able to work. Oh, my God. Work together. I cannot sing, y'all. I, I, God knew I didn't need a voice to sing. Come on, somebody. I cannot sing. That's Dr. Clay. That's her gift. But I'm not going to get in her way because I feel, come on, somebody. The Lord told me to say, I feel it in my spirit. Come on, y'all. The Lord told me to sing today. The Lord didn't tell you that. That ain't even your lane. He's not going to tell you to do something that, you, oh, my God, that's out of your lane. That he didn't give you to do? The Lord told me to lead the choir. You can't direct, you can't see, you can't, oh my God, okay, that's another, that's another, that's another subject. Come on, keep it, keep it, keep it nice, preacher. So, so our gifts should be able to work together, not, not saying that we won't stumble and fumble as we're learning because it's new. Because we got to get our chemistry. But we shouldn't be at odds with each other two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, twenty years down the road still fighting one another. Come on, y'all. Because it's the same gift. <laughs> I mean, the same spirit, the same spirit, the same spirit, the same spirit. Okay, where am I? Uh, 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 verse 12, for as the body is, for as the body is one and hath what? 
many members and all the members of that one body being many, guess what, are one body, so also is Christ not divided. Christ is not divided. He not divided. So we shouldn't be either. Because I heard when we get saved, the Spirit of God come and live where? Within us. So if I got God in me, you got God, 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 you got God. You got God you got. We all got God in us. <laughs> What's the fight about? Oh, my God. Something that creeped in. And so I think I hear you, I hear you sometimes. Thank you, Holy Spirit. A lot of times I thought it was the devil. A lot of time it's us. But the third thing that I'm learning now in my older age is the lack of knowledge. We don't actually know what our gift is, or if we do know what our gift is, we don't know how to operate or how to use it. Or how my gift can complement your gift, and your gift can complement my gift. And so now we in, thank you, Holy Spirit. I've been married 19 years this October to Dr. Clay. First wife, last wife, praise the Lord. <laughs> Both of us are very strong. Both of us, very strong. So we have to learn how our strengths <laughs> can complement one another. And now that's looking like animal planted like two rams button heads. It's, so... So that means we ha it's some learning that has to take place. We have to be taught, oh, my God, how we can learn. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We have to be taught what our gifts are and how to operate in that gift and then how to complement others. Because sometimes I have to bag down. Oh, my God. Service is going on, and I'm feeling a certain way, and God is moving. And Dr. Claire, get off the organ. I know this. She's operating. Come on, y'all. God got her off the organ. So what do I do? I back up. Or I get behind her and follow her, and, you know, it, because I understand her gift and how it operates. So sometimes we don't know how our gifts operate. And so that's why a lot of times we are fighting amongst each other. And God like, wait a minute, why are you fighting? I gave you this gift so you can help his gift, and I gave you that gift so you can help her gifts, so forth and so on, verse 13, for by one spirit are we all baptized into one body, whether we be church folk or from the hood. I mean, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, <laughs> whether we be bound or free and have been all made to drink into one spirit. For the body is not one member, but many. So that means we can't do this by ourselves. This is not a one-man show. This is not a one-man band. I don't want to do everything. I, I promise you I don't. Thank you, Jesus. And family, y'all shouldn't want me to. Come on, y'all. Pastor, our pastor can do it. He can evangelize. Call pastor. He can pray. Call pastor. He can go by there. Call pastor. He can do all. Wait a minute. What you doing? Help me go by there. Come on, y'all. Help me pray. Help me make a difference. Thank you, Jesus. Pastor can teach. Help me teach. Get in class so I can trust you to teach the class. Let me teach you so you can teach us. Thank you, Jesus. If the foot shall say, because I'm not the hand, I'm not of the body. Is it therefore not of the body? Just because it say I'm not? And if the ear shall say, because I am not the eye. I am not of the body. Is it therefore not of the body? If the body were, if the body were an eye, where would the hearing? If the whole were hearing, where was the smelling? Paint this big picture. If you just a big old eyeball, thank you. We need each part. We need your gifts, okay? I'm gonna stop there. We need your part. I'm not gonna keep reading 12. We need your gifts. God needs your gift. That's why he gave it to you. Amen. 
And guess what? I was just sharing with one of our newest spiritual daughters on last night. I was sharing with her, Dr. Clay and myself, that listen, God connects this body perfectly. So when people are attracted to anointed praise and worship ministries, I pretty much know what's going on, which I pretty much can see your gift before you can, if you don't already see it and know it. I pretty much already see it because God calls certain types of people to certain houses of God. <laughs> oh, my God. Thank you, Jesus. So somebody say fivefold ministry. Fivefold, fivefold ministry, fivefold ministry. He said, I gave us, he said, I gave different gifts, but they are of the same spirit. So that means we don't have a right to say your gift is not important here. Well, we don't, we don't do that over here. We don't, no, no, wait a minute. No, no. He said he gave all these gifts for the perfecting of the church, y'all, for the edifying of the body, for the perfecting of the church, for the maturing of the church. If we don't have all these gifts, guess what? We'll never mature. We just come in and shout, hey, church, and go home, but people still leaving bound. I don't, I don't want that. I want when people walk on the parking lot, even when they just going into Innovations on Willow Thrift Store. Did y'all see that plug? Hey, man. <laughs> when, even when they go into Innovations on Willow Thrift Store at 2901 South Willow uh, to get all of their housing and clothing and furniture needs here in the city of Pine Bluff, Arkansas, 71603. When, even when they walk on the parking lot, hey, man, to go to the Innovations on Willow Thrift Store, to see Mr. Dennis, they ought to feel the Holy Ghost when they're walking on the parking lots. Like, wait a minute, I don't like cigarettes no more. Wait a minute. They come on cussing, they mouth this locker. Wait a minute, I don't need to say that. That tastes nasty coming out of my mouth. That's what I'm talking about. Amen. I, listen, y'all, I'm just crazy enough to believe that. Amen. That people come in and just begin to be delivered. Come in in the wheelchair, just hop out the wheelchair like, Lord, have mercy. At the door. I, I just believe it. I have dreams like that all the time. I tell my wife about it. I've been telling her for years. Like, we just standing up here preaching and teaching, and the people praising God, and I just wave my hand, and the whole audience just falling, the north slain in the Holy Ghost, and ain't nobody touch nobody. Oh, my God. Y'all like, is he wild? Is he crazy? No, I'm not. He did it the other night. Yes, at the revival, the young lady just lifted up her head and the wind of glory just hit her. She fell out the chair. And the wind of glory hit Dr. Clay. She was blowing like a leaf through here. I had to run from the pulpit. Y'all remember? She couldn't even keep <laughs> She was getting blown so fast, her little ass couldn't even keep up. I had to run from up there. And as soon as I got here, she fell. I was like, Lord, thank you, Jesus. So, oh, my God. So, everybody gift. Let me look at my time. Everybody gift works. Everybody gift works. Oh my God, let's close with this one. Not only is the church the bride of Christ, y'all make sure y'all go back and read 1 Corinthians chapter 12, please go there and read it. Read it in the King James. Check out the New Living Translation. Uh, New Living is closest to the King James. NIV, they cool, but he sometimes takes words out, which takes away the meaning and the power of what God is saying. But it's a cool translation as well. Um, and I think the English Standard Version is pretty cool as well. Um, so not only is the church the bride of Christ, and the body of Christ, but it is also the assembly of believers who gather to worship God in unity and to be his fragrance to the rest of the world. We, we gather to worship God in unity. That's a powerful statement. That we come together to worship God in unity. What's the opposite of unity? Discord, disunity, disarray, division. Wow. I just want you to, I just want, don't say no names. But have you went to some places and they call themselves worshiping God, but it wasn't in unity. It was in all of the stuff you just mentioned. I don't belong. I don't want to go to church, Pastor, where I got to fight at the door to get in. I 
ain't fighting the devil to get in. He ain't bothering me. He's like, oh, yeah, you go. We, you, 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 I know where you're going. I ain't got to worry about that. <laughs> Who gather to, we, we gather to worship in unity and to be his fragrance to the rest of the world. So that means there must be some stinky churches. If, the, if unity, if we come to worship God in unity and we are the fragrance to the rest of the world, what if we worship in him and we in discord, in division? Uh, we disarray in our worship as missionary did. We, we in disarray. That's actually Malachi chapter 1. If you go there where it talks about, man, y'all messing with me now. Where it talks about they brought the blind, the sick, and the lame sacrifice. And the, and, and, and the blind sacrifice was, oh, my God, I got to get out of here. And the blind sacrifice was worshiping God with no understanding. <laughs> Lame sacrifice. It's broken. My, my mind is over here and over there. Oh, my God. Pastor said, I'm, I'm, I'm in the book. Okay. He says, so we must gather to worship him in unity and be his fragrance. So when the people come into the church, they... They coming in looking for that fragrance. Not just the plug-ins, but the fragrance of the Lord. His peace, his presence, his power, his love. When they come in, they ought to feel joy. They ought to feel strength. His fragrance. That the Lord is here. Thank you, Jesus, for your fragrance. The world needs to be able to smell Jesus on your clothes like they used to smell everything else. When you one say, come on, somebody, you saved now. So, you know, when you go in Walmart, oh my God, Walmart, y'all owe me something for saying your name. Y'all owe me something for saying your name. Cash at me, APWM Pine Bluff. Come on, somebody, APWM Pine Bluff. But, but, but when you walk into the store and you're trying to cover up that sin, and people can still smell it. Now that we are the children of God, they ought to be able to smell the fragrance of the Lord on our clothes. Man, listen, y'all, I've been out, and, and listen, y'all, I got, you know, y'all see, you know, I got on my jeans and stuff tonight, but anyway, uh, I've been in the store, and, and I'm talking to a young man, he said, you're a minister, aren't you? And I'm like, do I look like one? He said, uh-uh, I can tell. Why? Because he gets the fragrance, <laughs> oh my God, the fragrance of the Lord is, oh, oh Lord Jesus, Lord, I thank you for the fragrance. Could somebody just say, Lord, I thank you for the fragrance. Listen, y'all, not only do I want you to read 1 Corinthians chapter 12, but also read Ephesians chapter 4, 1 through 16. We don't have time to read it tonight, but in your personal study time, would you please take out the time to read Ephesians chapter 1, Ephesians chapter 4, excuse me, verses 1 through 16. And it's concerning the assembly of believers. This is concerning the assembly of the believers. Were you all blessed on tonight? Amen. Amen. To, to God be the glory. We was dealing with the false, the fourth falsehood that we don't need to attend church to be growing Christians. But as we're noticing that we do need the church and the church need us. We are empowered here. We are strengthened here. Amen. We are uplifted here. And every time I see you all lovely faces, amen, it blesses my heart, amen, to continue to make the sacrifices that are made to make this possible, amen, the study time of the printout, amen. I, yeah, I got spanked, the printout, making sure we have the printouts and all of those things. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. So we have the printouts. Listen, family, we want to ask each and every one of you, if you would, if you would join us in the ministry of giving financially. We do have many things before us, and we just praise God for what God is doing in us and through us. For those of you who are watching online, uh, the lower third is going to come on the screen on the, the three ways to give, so go there even now and begin to sow your financial seed I'm going to ask
as you're preparing and minister, uh, oh my God, I keep saying it, minister uh, Deacon Dennis, thank you Jesus, hey, I keep saying it on him, uh, he's going to, when we prepare, he's going to pray and put his God's blessing over the offering, thank you Jesus, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Online family, we thank God for you all joining us tonight, hanging out with us on the night. Donnie Miller, God bless you. God bless you. I see you, Sister Hotshaw. God bless you. Sister Powell, take a moment. Y'all see the, the various ways to give on the screen. We have Cash Out. We have Cash Out. APWM Pine Bluff. We have Givelify at APWMCOGIC. You're also able to go to our website, APWMWorldwide.org, and click Give. Thank you, Jesus, at this time. <laughs> Dick and Dennis, oh my God. I'm struggling with that. Why keep saying Dick and Dennis? Uh, Dick and Dennis is coming to pray God's blessing over the offering, and then we'll go, for, for, go forward from there. see your faces, but God love it, the tear forgiver, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you, thank you, thank you, Put our hands together for Jesus. Thank you, Pastor, for that lesson. Y'all didn't he teach? Y'all, this some good stuff. You you can't just walk up in any church and just get this teaching like this. I'm, I'm just telling you. Y'all with me? Y'all agree? We can't just walk in anywhere and get it like this. This is real world teaching for right now. Right now. Uh, let's stand. Uh, Y'all keep in mind that there is no Sunday school just this Sunday, just this Sunday, uh, no Sunday school. So we will be here to prepare before our noonday service on Sunday. And then I praise God that my family is following me over to St. Stephen's for the annual Women's Day. I am the speaker. God bless you online family. I think pastor's going to go live. Y'all going to get to hear the word on Sunday. That's 3 o'clock p.m. Central Standard Time in St. Stephen's. Oh, so God bless you all that are going. Uh, I pray that all the family can go with you. As we look to God, Lord, we just thank you for this day. We thank you for this very moment in time that we will never see again. God, today you get the glory, you get the honor, you get the praise. God, we speak that no weapon that is formed against us shall prosper. God, we thank you that you have already conquered the enemy. We praise you that we understand that we are the body of Christ. We praise you that we understand that we are all members of one body. We all belong together in fellowship and in love with one another. God, we thank you for your word. We thank you for you teaching us and sending us a, a leader who can break the word down for us to help us to pull out our gifts that are deep down within us. God, we thank you. We thank you for healing. We thank you for wholeness for all those who have expressed that they have sickness or illness in their body. God, we speak that they are healed, whole, and
and delivered in Jesus' name. God, keep us as we go over the dangerous highways. Keep us and carry us over with your angels of protection round about us until we meet again. God, we are going to come in here and to give your name the ultimate praise in Jesus' name. Lord, bless our gifts, our seeds in the name of Jesus. And we all say amen. Make sure that you elbow everybody and let them know that you love them. It is God's desire that you connect with a healthy church family and fellowship with other believers. We understand that distance, health, and other circumstances may impact your ability to physically attend our church in person. With this in mind, God has blessed us with various platforms in which we are able to connect with you from around the world. We want to encourage you to become an online family member today here at Anointed Praise and Worship Ministries and enjoy the liberties of growing in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, with your new family. There are many benefits in becoming part of this anointing, some of which are, number one, regular updates on what is happening here at Anointed Praise and Worship Ministries. Number two, you'll connect with other church members from across the nation as well as locally through our various exciting social media platforms. Number three, every week you'll receive biblical instruction and inspiration through our weekly worship services, social media outlets, and pastoral teaching. Also, you will receive spiritual covering under the powerful and anointing of Pastor and Dr. Clay. For any questions in regard to our online community, please go to www.apwmworldwide.org or call our office at 870 870- 727-0061. Once again, to connect with us, go to www.apwmworldwide.org slash e-church or call our office at 870-727-0061. We're excited about growing and developing with you Welcome home.